It's, it's a point where the Orient and the Occident, they meet together and then you can have something very rich and very new. Because I've grown up passing checkpoints with a gun um, against my face. But then it was for me so normal to leave that. But the moment that I arrived here, I think, okay, I thought like, okay, this is really not normal what we are living as Palestinians, so... Do you remember the moment when you proposed to her? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> uh, it's, we all do that. It's the nature of, of human being. We, we look for happiness somewhere else. And we forget that it's just around us, here, next to us. Hello, my name is Diana Shah. Welcome to Dialogue. Today my guest is Mohamed Amuzaina, talented equestrian rider and coach. He was born in a big Palestinian family in Jericho, being one of ten kids. Currently, he's living and working in Switzerland. This year, Mohamed did over 1,000 kilometers trip on the bicycle all by himself. He will tell us more about this trip and about his life story in the interview. Hi Mohamed, uh, thank you for, for joining me for this uh, dialogue. Uh, and for, the, for, our, for our audience, I should say that you were um, so kind to be the first one, the, the first person who I interviewed for my first dialogue. But due to some technical issue, it, it, got, it, it got vanished. And that's why, uh, you know, I'm so pleased uh, you to be the guest number 10 now. Yeah. You, you are in dialogue 10, so it's like our little anniversary. And that's why I thank you so much that you support me, um, you know, support me in the beginning of the journey. And now pleasure, you're here yeah. again. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so you. much. Thanks. And uh, yeah, of course, you know, um, I would like to start uh, with your journey because I know that during this time, since our first interview, you made a very interesting trip. You made a bicycle yeah. trip. So, and yeah. I want that we start with that. Can you please tell a bit more about it? How many kilometers you did? Uh, which countries did you visit? And so, actually, the journey started from here, from the village where I live. It's called Kormabe, and uh, the destination was to go to Rome. It was around 1,100. Um, 50 kilometers. It took me 10 days to do it. First day it was uh, it was really not easy because the first day started with a thunderstorm. So at some point actually the Alps was closed so I couldn't go with the bike. And I, I had to take my bike inside the bus and to cross uh, the tunnel to go to the other side. And then it started from the um, north of Italy, then going um, really direction the center of Italy to Rome. It was just a crazy experience because, you know, with the, this period, it's very difficult for everyone with, the, with this uh, coronavirus uh, situation. So I want to do something to, to, to feel free. This trip was, uh, was uh, something I think I thought about it many times in my life but suddenly it was just all improvising i i decided to go to the trip at the beginning of the week on thursday i went to bring my bike and friday morning i started the journey so it was all just improvising so yeah but why did you decide to do it how did you come to the idea to do that so I, I, I like to, to, to do sports, so this is, this is, I would say, something really important to me, to move and, and to, to do things all the time. There is that reflection also for me that brings me to my country. Um, I come from an occupied country and a trip like that, I thought it would give me uh, uh, so much freedom. And I think the fact that I'm just having my bike and my bags in the back, it was so much um, freedom in the head that was giving me that feeling actually. And um, there was also that reflect. I thought, okay, a, a trip like that would also test my physical situation because three years ago I had um, an accident with my knee and I had to do an operation and I had to do the, the, 
the um, rehabilitation to to be back on my uh, on my feet. And then I thought, okay, a trip like that also could be something um, helps me to stand again and to test my physical situation, and which I was happy with because it it was a long trip because you are just pedaling the whole day and uh, and. It's, it's amazing to be on a bike because you can feel everything. You are on a speed where you can see so much things. You can smell the things. You can, there is like a very nice feeling because it's, it's a little bit faster than walk. Like you can go forward with the kilometers, but also it's a speed where you can really enjoy the landscape and the nature and everything. Yeah, and you did it alone. Um, I mean, are you generally a person who sometimes likes to uh, just to go somewhere and just stay with yourself? Because I know that you were born in the family where you were 10. And that's yeah. going to be my another question. So that's why I'm so curious why you take a bike trip and you want to be alone. And yeah. so. Yeah, I think the part to do alone, it's, it's something also to, to have that freedom. Because if I am alone, I, I am so free in my head to, to do um, the things with so much freedom. I don't have to think. I have to, to take care of something or I forgot something. It's just, I'm alone. This is my bike and that's it. Yeah, so. yeah that's true. And coming to your background, uh, background, so can you please tell a bit more about it? I know that you were born in Jericho. Um, yeah, I grew up in Jericho and... Um, it's the desert. It's, it's so beautiful. I miss it so much because now it's been really a long time I was not there. And um, I come from a big family where I have uh, um, five brothers and four sisters. It's, uh, it's so beautiful to, to grow up in a family like that. And um, yeah, my, my hero, my mother was like, she was the one who's taking care of everything, of us and uh, everything around actually yeah because like last 20 years she was uh, she was alone to take care of you right yeah exactly exactly i lost my father when i was uh, 12 so she was alone at the age of 40 she she had already uh, 10 kids so it's crazy i don't know how she did that it's it's such a miracle i could say i could say because it's it's crazy to to be alone with ten kids and to take care of the everything around actually. I think uh, education you, and everything, everything, everything. It, it's very inspiring because you know nowadays yeah, some people is. are even thinking like, oh getting one kid, how am I gonna handle it? And yeah. this kind of stories it's I true. think you it's know, true. But the world is changing. It's 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 like that. Yeah. We we are getting more um, distant with families i think i think it's just the world is getting somehow a bit disconnected i mean it's more connected by the social media but it's more disconnected as itself in the inside so yeah and and i think the societies are different now you live in um, europe um in switzerland and this is more individualistic society and of course you were born in more collectivistic society yeah, so do you yeah. really feel this difference uh while living in europe yeah well living here it's um, i would say it's it's a privilege because it's it's um it's a different mentality at the beginning i i looked at it in a in a different way, like I am in this country which is so cold, uh, people doesn't speak the language that I speak, and and uh, and it's different mentalities. People are really acting differently, and I was like, okay, yeah, I feel so much stranger. But then at some point, I think I changed just my way of looking at the things. I was I was thinking, okay, they are different. Maybe let's learn something from them. Because actually, it's it's um, it, it can be very rich to 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 learn from the people here. We can always take this positive side and just change the way of looking at the things, which I think also helped me to develop a language, develop a way of looking my own culture. Also, I think it's very very positive to to be here. And it's it's a point where the Orient and the Occident, they meet together and then you can have something very rich and very new. 
That's true, yeah. And what do you miss the most from home? Like, uh, how do you keep your cultural identity while being? Yes, yeah, so I, I, I love to eat. I love to cook so much, and I think food is something. Um, music is something also. I, I love to listen to Palestinian music almost every day. And, which, uh, which kind of artist? Which artist? Palestinian artist? Yeah, I, I love Rimbana. She's she's uh, she passed away. It's really sad. That was I think two years ago. But I think her music still living in the in the streets of Palestine and even the streets of Switzerland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And um, you came to Switzerland, and now you are working in a equestrian club. Uh, you yeah. are a rider and a coach. Um, so, how did your equestrian journey begin? Like back time in Palestine? Can you just yeah. explain more your journey from there to Switzerland? Yeah. So everything started in Jericho Equestrian Club, and at that period, it was two thousand and six. It was the um, director of the club, Hassan Bozlamit, and um, I was just having a walk around, and then. I passed the club to see the people and then suddenly I say, okay, why not start working as a groom, yeah. brushing horses, cleaning and doing all of the daily job that needs to be done around horses. And I was now with that time, like at that period at that time, I was more and more connected to the horses to understand how they function, how they react to the people, how the people react to them. It's very, very interesting. So. Everything started there in Jericho, and uh, yeah, now I am here in Switzerland, still working with horses. Yeah. And how many students you have uh, in the club, or so? Now where I work, so we have 110 horses, wow. and uh, I have around 80 students a week. Um, I give all of the lessons in in French. Um, and yeah, it's 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 so much different, I would say, from Palestine. The, um, the methods that people are using here, and I think uh, already the capacity of having uh, such big horses or such very very little ponies it helps so much to give the lessons. Because in Palestine we don't have these resources to bring horses from the outside, which is to adapt to the school horses. We usually take horses and we just work on them and they become ready to do the lessons. But let's say from the size for the students, it, it was not really um, it was not really adapting. I would say mm -hmm. in Palestine, uh, we had that miss from for the big horses to use them to do um, competitions because yeah, there is this many sides which stops us, but also there is the border sides. With she doesn't help also sure. because, because we are occupied at the end and to do all of the paperwork and and everything it really takes time we have so many obstacles that uh, we need to jump actually to to arrive to our goals some people they manage to have their own horses but some not because it's really a complicated procedure to 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 um, have horses in Palestine sure yes and what did what did horses teach you like which kind of features uh... so many things so many things so um i would say one of the most important things that i learned on horses was is that patience is to be patient it's something i feel um, i learned a lot that from the horses because they have that because for many times also it's you the rider who makes the mistake and they are always there holding up and carrying you on their backs so it's <laughs> it's 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 uh, it's so beautiful and i think one of the things also i can just think about is to improvise because life is full of that and i think with horses they learn you to improvise for many times in your day 
you have things that are arriving and you need just to change that plan and, and to come up with a new plan and do something new. So it's, uh, it's very interesting to be with them. Yeah, they teach you also to be flexible in your thinking, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And um, who like who helped you the most on your on your way? Uh, which kind of like which people were you know your yeah. let's say yeah. teachers? I, I I think I think um, the um, the main um, uh, thing what helped me in my way is God. He he was there always for me. This is for sure. Um, I am not someone who practices my religions five times a day. I'm, I'm not so proud of it, but it's like that. But I, I feel God with every step in my life. Every little step I made or I'm doing in my life, I was feeling him there. So I think he's the main reason why I am still happy, why I am still living. And still practicing my work, still walking on my feet. So, so it's thanks to him. Uh, I've got my mother always there uh, for me in every step, also of my life. I've got um, someone who was there for me as a father, Ricardo. Um, I got my brother Amin from Jerusalem. I got my wife, Marie. It's. I'm blessed with all of these people around me because I think uh, we need to be connected somehow. It's, it, for me, it's really important to be connected to, to people. It's, um, it's a treasure to be uh, surrounded by such uh, amazing people like that. And how did you meet your wife, Marie? I know that she was also in Palestine, right, for some so time. What did she, she do used, there? Yeah, she used to do uh, music projects in Palestine. And we met there uh, now uh, eight years ago, actually. So um, at that point, she was doing her music projects, and then we met through a friend, and now we are married since uh, five years. Do you remember the moment when you proposed to her? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> You almost gave me the same feeling I had at that moment, yeah. <laughs> that was my goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but, um, <laughs> and talking about, like, how do you, you, you say that the people are the sources of your, of course, your people, the right people in your life are your, you know, energy booster, let's say. Yeah. Uh, but what are your other hobbies apart from sports? Do you like like reading? Maybe there are some books that inspired you yeah, in your life. I, I really like to read. Uh, there is this Swiss um, uh, author, it's uh, Joël Dicker, who writes um, very, very uh, novels about like uh, police and conspiracy things and stuff like that, which is... Uh, I'm really um, attracted by these, uh, these, these books. So I really suggest uh, anyone who who likes to live these adventures or live these feelings to read a book, to, to read from him. Okay, well, that's interesting. And um, what is for you happiness? So happiness, I think it's uh, what I am living right now in my life. It's um, to be able to wake up in the morning, going and uh, being able to share some moments with, uh, with the horses. It's, um, it's, I think, everything I have around. Because I think sometimes people go and search for uh, happiness uh, so much far. They don't really see that happiness is where they are right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's we all do that. It's the nature of, of human being. We we look for happiness somewhere else, and we forget that it's just around us, here next to us. That's true. Yeah. So, like living here now, this is a very yeah, important yeah, it's, skill. It's. it's Somehow, I think some people might call it boring to wake up and do the same thing every day, but I think somehow it's very rich because 
you are um, able to do these things because I think um, not everybody, everyone is able to walk actually already, you know. We have people who are not able to walk. So already if you are able to go walking to your work, this is a bless. You know what, what I mean? Already you are riding horses. I think it's, it's, it's a sport where not everyone is able to do that. I think I'm just happy to be on my, the back of my horse and sure. doing the, the jumping course or something like that. You know, it's, yeah. It's... And I think like also you as a person who was born in the, in the, in the country, in the place where there is a conflict zone, you know, and uh, yeah. already when you came to Europe, you could see this freedom and, you know, absence of borders and the people, they live and they think it's normal, but you know that this is not normal. And I think it you is, already, yeah. you can see how sometimes yeah. we live and we do not really appreciate what yeah. we have. Yeah, but, but that happened actually. If it's true. The moment that I arrived here, it's I realized that what we live as Palestinians, it's not normal. Because I've grown up passing checkpoints with a gun um, against my face. But then it was for me so normal to leave that. But the moment that I arrived here, I think, okay, I thought like, okay, this is really not normal what we are living as Palestinians. So, so still I would say, okay, I would go back now to Palestine and live there. I, I don't, I will be happy to do that. Still, it's my, my beautiful country and I will be always attracted to it. So, but it made me realize that, okay, what you are living is not normal as Palestinians, actually. Uh, what you, would you wish to your 10 years old self? <sighs> I wish that uh, he keeps living and uh, uh, enjoying the life. It's, there's so much things to live, there's so much live, things to, to enjoy in this life, so let's take the chance to live that and enjoy it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was very you, inspiring. Diana. Thank you. And uh, I wish you, you of Diana. course a lot of luck to you and to your students and um, yeah, so and of Thank course you very much. to stay healthy first of all during these crazy times. Thank, Thank you, you very Diana. much.